Over the last 400 years, it has seen countless dreams, both crushed and realized. Locals speak on it with a reverence that's borderline religious. And in America, it has more history than anywhere. With all that being said, in my industry, I don't think this place gets enough notoriety. Fishing in New York is something that I've wanted to do for over a decade. And after this trip, I can say with conviction that I will most certainly be back. Hungry fish, delicious food, and intriguing individuals are just a few of the things that I experienced on this adventure. Join us as we chase giants through New York's legendary fishing grounds. Hooked up. Big one, boy. Big one. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to New York. No, I really didn't expect I'd be fishing up here this year, but I just got invited on this epic trip. And after I heard the stories, I knew I had to get up here. I'm now looking to meet up with our boy. You guys are probably gonna recognize him. Let's go see if we can find him. Hello, sir. Do you know anything about fishing? Hey, I'm ready, finally. Dude, you even got the travel rod. What's doing, up, man? man? Good to see you. Rich and I hopped in an Uber, and we had about an hour ride to Farmingdale, New York, this little town in the middle of Long Island where we would be staying. Rich, you're the only guy I know that has fishing rods at the hotel waiting for you when we check in here. J&H tackle, baby. Yeah, Josh, Josh at J&H hooked it up from uh, what else did he give you? He gave you a whole goodie bag. I didn't get anything. Double spooks there. Ooh. Dude, look at that. You let me hold it? Because you can have that one. Oh man, I don't I don't think I deserve this. And a Saragossa? Oh, that's, you can have that one. that's great. Only the finest here in New York. Wow. Yeah, you guys know, there's just something about the skyline out here. Just incredible. It's a city that never sleeps, if you will. What is it? What is that place? Is that is that a local spot? Floor and decor? What do they do over there? Um, I if you, if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. It's, it's <laughs> we just got some dinner. It's about 11 o'clock now, I think. Yeah, about 11. We got to be up at like 3.45, top in the truck, and then ride all the way to where the boat's gonna be, hopefully be to the dock by 4.30 a.m. So don't get much sleep on these trips. We're getting all the cameras, all the fishing gear ready, and <laughs> man, I'm excited. It's looking like it's gonna be a little bit rough in the morning, but we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. It is bright and early, right around 5.30 a.m. I swear it gets light here earlier. You ready to go, Rich? Ready? No, let's catch the fish. <laughs> and this is Matt. He is gonna be professionally filming this trip, so the video he makes is probably gonna be a lot better from the video that I make, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna aspire to be as good as the video that he makes. Unfair advantage though, he gets to be filming the whole time. I have to try and film and fish, so we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. So, today the wind is ripping. We're not going to be able to make it offshore, so we actually get to fish for some species that I have never fished for in my entire life. The goal going to be to try and find some weak, weak fish, which I believe are like a cool looking speckled trout, but they get a lot bigger. And then possibly also some fluke, which most of you guys would know as a flounder. Are, are they the same species, Rich, or are they different? Do you know? They're, they consider them summer flounder up here, but like down in your neck of the woods, they, they call yours uh, southern flounder. We made it. We were only five or 10 minutes late and that was on me because I could not read a GPS directions properly. <laughs> um, but we have Nate, the editor in chief for Saltwater Sportsman. You guys might recognize him from the Panama video we did in, in uh, at Tropic Star Lodge. He is giving us the proper New York treatment and helping us out with some fresh bagels this morning. I'm starving, so that is great. And we are on this beautiful 
31 foot sailfish, which sailfish boats um, is allowing us to use on this trip today. And we're gonna go over some of the details of the boat throughout the day. And I'm excited to learn about it, fish on it and see what it's all about. June right now and it's still a little chilly out here as so we're riding out covered up in all our rain gear but it is a beautiful morning bluebird skies definitely gonna warm up um, and man I'm, I'm excited I've never fished in an area like this or fish for these species so it's all gonna be a cool learning experience I don't know why low I think works better so we are fishing for weak fish right now which kind of look like a speckled trout have a little half ounce spro jig, just like a bucktail jig. We also added a tail to it. We added some gulp to it. And these are like little soft plastics, but they're really sponges and they hold all of this scent. And for a lot of species, speckled trout I know love gulp. And I'm assuming these will act very similarly to a speckled trout. See what we can do. Let's also see if I can not back backlash on the first cast of the day. A lot of these fish are holding on the bottom from what I know. You know, a real slow retrieve, kind of keep it on that bottom. Pop it every now and then. And ring it up. So last week, Nate was fishing these waters and he had a day where they were catching double digit weak yeah. fish. They were catching fish or at least getting a bite almost every drop. We started to mark some fish on the Garmin and it seemed like it was going to work out in our favor. It seemed like these fish were gonna be there. Very similar pattern to what Nate had seen. Yeah. But like any fishing trip, you never really know what to expect. Okay, we are back at it. I'm gonna cast out, see what we can get. Honestly gonna take anything that we can get, any species, but um, overall the goal is definitely some weak fish, maybe some fluke. Um, we'll see what we can get. There we go. We are tight, real subtle bite, real subtle bite. Whoo, digging. Whoa, baitcaster boy. Look at that fluke. You got the net? Get yep. Yeah, beauty. Get his head around. Woo! Like fish. There we go. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, man! Fish. All right, they're starting to bite. That's that's a nice fluke. That's a stud. All right, yeah. I want to stay with him while he's hooked up, and I'll yeah. get the fluke for sure. We'll get him out and untangled. All right, well. Is that a blue? Yeah. That's a weak, isn't it? No, it's a little blue. I'll let you. You want to deal with it? Yeah, for sure. That thing. So that is a beautiful fluke. My first one ever. I definitely caught the southern flounder before, but this is a stud. I mean, this might actually be bigger than any flounder I've ever caught before. Beautiful fish, and these are great eating too. Actually gonna let this one go today. Um, let him live to swim another day and be caught by another angler, but right, look at those move. teeth. That is such an interesting looking fish. They sit on the bottom kind of wait to ambush prey kind of blending in because they're so flat so you guys see this side it's all colored all camouflaged and then this side this white side is going to sit on the bottom that never sees the light of day because he's just kind of chilling but they got two fillets on each side man it's crazy looking fish with eyes on the both eyes on the same side i'm gonna hold on to the tail yep. oh, he was ready to go right, <laughs> that was sick Nate? Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Guide me to my first uh, first fluke ever. Thank you a nice. For not dropping my uh, bait caster in the water. Oh, I almost did. <laughs> How many bluefish in the boat? Two, three, two, two or three bluefish in the boat. A couple released with their eyes at the boat. <laughs> Quick release. Um, a couple fluke hooked. Still waiting for that right bite.
Sorry, boys. I'm sure you wanted to see that one on camera. Some videos I love watching are the guys that are really good at skipping their big That's a fluke. Fluke? Yep. Nice fluke, too. I want the net for him. So we got that one fluke in the boat, a couple smaller bluefish as well, um, but we're waiting for that tide to really pick up, start moving. Hopefully we can pick up the weak fish that we've been looking for. Just had something, just grab it, and go to set the hook and then it's just not there. You know, you see it a lot in different fisheries where fish will just short strike something literally just grab the end of it so you feel that tension you think it's got it all the way and you set the hook um, but lure fishing you're never really gonna let them eat it anyway so you're just gonna have that sometimes where you get a bite and you set the hook and nothing's there you just gotta be reminded you know you're in the right area you fishing it hard wait for the wait to get that right bite so I brought zero light gear on this trip so I was borrowing one of Nate's rods and reels and I typically fish my bait caster with the handle on the left side. And it wasn't the most comfortable thing throughout the day. That's literally one of the reasons why I think this happened, where the rod got ripped out of my hands on that fluke. But by the end of the day, I was pretty much used to it. And I think that's true for most people. If you just stick it out with the opposite side rod and reel, you'll be able to figure it out after a couple hours of fishing. Just like right along the edge of it? No. Oh, there's a fluke. There we go. Yeah, for sure. Oh, big, big son. Big, heavy fish. Woo, son. I'm making my way to the left a little bit. Here we go. Woo, in the boat. Cool. That is the third fluke that we've got up to the boat beautiful fish man they've all been bigger fish the tide's real slack so there's not much current out here and we we're literally talking how sometimes you find some bigger fish on the slack tide it seems like the bigger lazier fish are like we're gonna chew and then once that tide starts moving you get more numbers but may not be as quality but that's a, like, that's a healthy fish Dude, look at this guy. four or five mounter and this is big for inshore right i mean it's it's a it's a solid fish yeah you know you'll get bigger fish mm -hmm. you know but i mean you could i mean we've had a great day already we've got yeah. three fish that size yeah. that's uh that's a great day for fluke. Yeah, absolutely. It's sick. And Nate's actually going to take this one home and eat it because these things are absolutely Getting delicious. So this is my first impression with this boat. We're on a 31-2 sailfish. It seems like it can do a little bit of everything. I literally was just hanging out here earlier. Whoop. Just hanging out here earlier. Extra comfortable seating. And then we want to get fishing again. Just folds away. I've never seen that on a boat before. And it's been really comfortable to walk around the boat. We have a cameraman, we have three anglers, um, we have a lot of people on the boat writing a lot of stuff, but there's been a really wide beam and it's been laid out really nice and easy to use. I'm no boat expert though, and we actually do have a boat expert on the boat today. So I'm going to bring you guys over to uh, Dennis, and he's going to explain some of the features of this sailfish boat and kind of how it's been running. So this is Denny. I noticed when we were running earlier that uh, the spray from the boat was kind of just like kicking out. So is it like the hull design that does that, or what, what is it that like was causing that? Yes, there's a number of things. This unique hull that we label as a VDS hull, which is a variable degree stepped hull. Variable degree stepped hull. Yeah, okay. and, and most people on a stepped hull, they think of it stepped from the bow to the stern. Notch yeah, is not. kind of see those like notches right, that notches. you'll see. Well, ours is stepped from the center line out to the chine. Okay. So you have a 24, 23, 22 uh, dead rise. And it's, Those are like the degrees of right, dead rise? Yeah. Okay. And it's constantly changing every inch. Mm -hmm. So it's like a seagull wing. So what you were seeing. Like, like kind of like an yeah, arc like yeah. that. Yeah, and then the chines are, 
or hard turn down chines at okay. a negative degree angle. So what you're seeing is that water, when it comes through and slices it, it just sneezes it out. It doesn't let it go up. Yeah. And if there's any water coming up the side of the hull, we have a spray rail around there that turns it right back down. So mm. all the water is managed going out. And that's that's very unique hull design to this boat. You don't really see that on other and en other boats. Correct. Selfish only. It's been super super comfortable, and there's been some cool stuff. Like so, Denny was showing me right here on the front of the boat. The whole layout of the dash is really really nice. So the Garmin's look really cool. You don't have to stick your hands in the steering wheel to, to do anything. To touch any buttons. So you got all this. Yep. And one nice thing is a safety feature too. Yeah. So when you're running, you can work the tabs without ah. letting go, without letting go of the steering wheel, or without letting go of this. Other people have tabs here, they have tabs over here, you got buttons all See, over. See, that's the place. engineered with actual use in mind, not engineered just to be cute. <laughs> right. And yeah. safety. So the ergonomics of the dash yeah. is, is wonderful. So we're gonna keep fishing on this boat. We're gonna do a bunch of different things on it. It's been really, really cool. But if you guys are interested in learning more about this sailfish boat, I will have everything linked down in the description below and you guys can check it out. So. Man, I don't know what this is. Let's see. Come on up, fish. What we got? Oh, a sea robin. Does that count as part of the slam, Rich? No. Am I... Do I touch these things or not touch these things? Uh, you can lift them. Yeah, probably probably like the best. Is it your first one? I think so. I've definitely caught fish that look like this, but I don't think a sea robin. Really? Whoa. I think this is negative points, isn't it? I think, I, I think it's a pretty crazy looking fish though. <laughs> look at those fins, man. That is wild. That thing is ready to fly away. Um, damn, pop that on the bottom. That's another species off, uh, another new species for me this trip. All sorts of new stuff. I'm definitely <laughs> the most inexperienced out of everyone on the boat when it comes to all of these fish up here, but pretty cool, man. I feel like that head's gonna be rock hard. It is. That is rock, rock hard. Let's let them go. seeing the history of it because air, other areas in the United States don't have as much history behind them where I mean we're a young nation as it is but when you come up and see all of these historical landmarks like that lighthouse has probably been there for 200 ish years um, Nate was saying that's actually where the inlet used to be and you can see a lot of this habitat has been preserved a lot of this is very natural this barrier island that I'm flying the drone over you can't even drive a car on um, the people that live on it have golf carts they get out to it by a ferry um, it's just a very unique area and it's a fishy area because my man Nate has hooked up again He's a Whoa, look at that species. Does that count in the slam rich? So we kept on fishing and we were picking fish here and there we were getting a bite Maybe every 30 minutes two bites every hour or so so it wasn't red hot But there was definitely enough action to keep us entertained and keep keep us chasing these fish really seemed like it was only fluke. You, as you guys can see, I'm looking pretty comfy in the Navalis apparel hoodie that I'm wearing. Bamboo clothing that I've been wearing for over two years. As you guys know, you can save with my code flashing on the screen, just save you a little bit of money. Look at this juicy release too. Matt was doing a great job with the slow-mo shots on this trip. Honestly, it's really cool to have a professional videographer document the trip for you because I can only do so much when I'm trying to fish and film at the same time and he's able to get things that I would never ever get. Just picked my rod up out of the rod holder and there was a fish on there. I was like, oh, jokingly saying that the rod holder is gonna hook me a fish and it literally just did. And we have another fluke. Phew, yeah. All right, I'll pull him in. That was not our best work, but we'll get, we'll get better. We need to fish together more often. If you look closely, you can see all of these spots that just mimic, you know, the speckled bottom that he's living on.
with a full day of fishing scheduled for the next day and multiple thunderstorms rolling in, we decided it was in our best interest to head back in and get prepared for day two. The plan is right now, I'm gonna try and go to a local restaurant and have them prepare a fluke that we caught today and kept. Um, don't know if that's gonna pan out, but hopefully that does. I'm gonna try and video a little bit of that for you guys. And tomorrow, the plan is to try and maybe get offshore, target some big tunas, and also target some giant stripers because there are some giant striped bass. So stay tuned, still a lot of action that has to happen. Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. Good fishing. Here's the weak fish. Next time. I caught all the weak fish I guarantee today. you. So like this the first one, he called it Ingawa, Ingawa. correct? Mm -hmm. And what, what did you say it was, Rich? I don't remember. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't remember. It kind of tastes like ceviche. Yeah, but that was like, that was literally Looking the fish. Looking at this. Oh, this special dish. Wow. wow. <laughs> the lights and everything. That's amazing. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my God. Food, right? That is beautiful. A sashimi preparation. <laughs> and then we also have deep fried with sweet and sour sauce on it. This is incredible. Thank you, thank wow. You. I go get some cool stuff. Thank you, good night. First, the first uh, wasabi for you. Uh, they'd be like, oh, we don't want all of it. It's probably highly illegal. Yeah. What do you guys think so far of the food? Amazing. Oh, it's unbelievable. Delicious. So that was like a like semi-raw fin presentation. Literally never had fresh wasabi in my life. You guys have to try fresh wasabi if you can actually get it. Wonderful. Honestly, I don't know what else you could ask for. This is one heck of a meal. And a whole bottle of sake. A little dice side. Uh-huh. Yeah. So there is literally no fish left at all. That fluke was absolutely phenomenal. Great presentation here. We are going to pack it up and get some rest. And then I will see you guys in the morning because tomorrow there are gonna be some giant fish that we're gonna be chasing. So see you guys there. Good morning. We are loaded up in the truck. Um, we've already gotten lost in Long Island, what, one or two times, Rich? Yes. <laughs> Once or twice. I think we're already six minutes past the time we were supposed to be there. Um, so hopefully we get there soon and the boat does not leave us. So we made it. I said that they might leave us, they did not leave us, so we're good to go even though we were 15 minutes late. We have Captain John McMurray, I said that right, right? Yep, you got it. You're gonna put us on some big fish today, right? I'm gonna do my best. I can see it, he's ready to go. He's serious too, so <laughs> I'm gonna crack that hard shell eventually throughout the end of the day. Right. Appreciate it, John. <laughs> <laughs> So the weather didn't look promising, so unfortunately tuna was off the table for this trip. That meant we were chasing stripers, and that also meant we're looking for bunker schools. We're gonna snag these bait fish and hopefully catch some striped bass. But first, we gotta find them. So it's a little bit rougher than expected, but we just ran, I don't know how far, it was like 30, 45 minutes. Get a little bit of spray, definitely the ocean is not happy with us right now, but. So we finally find a school, which wasn't very big and didn't even show up on camera. But I casted out this treble hook, basically a snatch hook, and snagged a bunker. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to feel completely whole when I snagged it. Ah, uh-huh. Well, I did have a bunker. The uh, the bluefish stole him off of my hook. All right, I'm gonna rig up circle hook 7-0 inline BKK. It's heavy circles. Uses a great hookup ratio on these guys. Oh. 
Well, just got the sailfish all bloody. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Does this fish even know it's hooked yet? Let's see. Yeah. It's a dogfish. What is that? Okay. Uh-huh. There it is. If I could just pop that hook out here. Hell yeah. So we tried to bump from bunker school to bunker school, but man, it was tough. We just weren't seeing all that much. The conditions weren't ideal to find them, and they just weren't really schooled up in the big schools that Captain McMurray had been seeing. Finally, we come up on a big school after a couple hours of looking, and we snag a ton of these things. Now, there weren't any striped bass actually feeding in this school, so we decided that we were going to load up on these things, fill the live well up, and then head to a spot where Captain McMurray knew there was going to be some striped bass hanging out. Now this area that Cap McMurray took us to was super interesting. In the time of Ellis Island, this island was actually used as a quarantine area for people that were just too sick to make it. And you know a bunch of people definitely did not make it. So this island might be more of a graveyard than anything else. All right, so we pulled in here to this island. It smells like all the birds um, have been living on it for a long time. I'm gonna throw this up against the rocks, throw this plug up against the rocks and uh, see what happens. You can go on my right. You'll probably be able to get a better cast. Oh, on me. That was a fish. Come on, come on, come on. We'll get him with the live bait. He popped it good though. Oh, fish. Oh, 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 come on. Get it, get it, get it. Oh my God, get it. Oh my God, no. Oh, oh, <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. None of those fish. There's a bunch of them. The top water didn't get any more follow, so I decided it was time to try live bait. Okay. I'm gonna take this live bunker. Oh yeah, he is lively. We are going to hook him all. The BKK circle hook. Fling him out there. Getting eaten. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. You on? There we go. All right, Ryan is on. With the bunker. Yeah. Or. <laughs> That's a big one. Woo! Let's go. Choked it. Pitched it up in there. Felt the fish chasing it. And I saw a little fish. But we'll pick this up. It's not a little fish. Woo! Buddy. That was cool. To just feel the bait just absolutely freaking out. And then suddenly boom it's solid you could feel you could feel the weight behind what's going on man look at that i don't want to put too much pressure on this fish wow there's some power behind this one there's some power behind this one coming down you got a real one on there, i did get a real one i couldn't believe it because the fish i saw chasing it was about my forearm size yeah. I don't know, let's see how big he is. 
Like yeah. He's got some attitude. He's not small. It's a nice one for sure. There we go. Beautiful fat fish. There we go. <laughs> Check that out. How's that for an epic location and a beautiful fish? Man, these this fish brawled. A lot of current here, man. He choked that live bunker. That's super cool. He's giving us a show right now, too. His fins are all stuck up, showing off how pretty he is. Wow, this one's pretty green. You know, you see these fish in so many different colors. You see them in purples and blacks, and sometimes you see them real light colored. This one's got a lot of greens to them. Really, really beautiful. Feel really lucky to be able to catch this fish. And if you like big fish like this, you guys make sure to like the video because we're putting work in and that's a great way to help out the channel. We're gonna get this guy back in the water. We're gonna, we are gonna release this one. Oh, well, I got that one to swim away from us. <laughs> we are headed up to the front. Bada bing, bada boom. There's one. There you go. On the shad. Nice. Yeah. I just got picked up too. Double. Oh, there you go. Woo! Let's go. Ripping, son. Ripping. These fish are so much fun, man. I see why, you know, people have such just a, there's a craze about them up Solid here. Ones here. I can grab them. Yeah. I think it'll be cool. I'll come on to the back of the boat. Look at that guy. Super fat, healthy fish, man. Munching on bunker here. Man, that is just so much fun. You see why people love these fish. They're a very important species to this area and something that I feel very lucky to get to catch. Woo, spunky fish, man. Indeed, I don't know what else you can ask for. We can, the goal is still to break my personal best, which is like 42 inches. That fish was maybe 34, 35 but super healthy, man. I'm happy that we're catching those fish. I'm gonna keep trying to catch one of those really big giants. Now, I've been traveling a ton lately, and one of those reasons is because Saltwater Sportsman has been sending me to these awesome destinations to experience really new fisheries and show them to you guys. So for more information on these adventures or to save 70% off on a subscription, go down and check the link below. Now, the next two hours were some of the most fun that I've had fishing in quite some time. We really keyed in on where the fish were stacked up, and we found that they were going to eat a live bunker or a dead bunker, and Rich even got them to eat some lures. It was just a very refreshing time because I've been on some grinds and some trips lately, and it was just so much fun to just cast out a bait and know that you were going to get picked up and catch a quality fish. Now. We didn't find any giants, and we kind of figured that all of the giants were going to be more offshore on the bunker schools. So on our way in, we were, this is pretty much the end of the day, we decided we're going to look and see if we could find any more bunker schools and maybe hit a buzzer beater giant. I appreciate it, bro. We were cruising back in and not seeing much of anything. It looked pretty empty. Then suddenly, we saw it. We see this surface commotion. It's a whale, and it's feeding on a bunker school. That whale isn't alone either. There's also giant striped bass feeding on those bunker. It's looking like we might actually get a shot at a true 40 plus inch fish. I immediately snag a bunker, hook it on a circle hook, and cast it out. And what happens next is exactly what I was looking for. That would have been the perfect storyline, but in fishing, it doesn't always happen like that. You don't always catch the best fish at the end of the video. 
but I wanted to put this fish at the end of the video. So just know it happened in the morning, but here it is. There we go. Hooked up. Fish on. Ooh, Ooh buddy. Hooked up. Big one, boy. Yeah, Big one. That's what we like to hear. Man, that thump was intense. You just feel the bait just get boom whacked as the fish inhaled it. Oh, he's coming up. Wow, look at him on top, dude. His fin is out of the water, tail's out of the water. Wow. That is sick. What a beautiful fish. Funny. Okay. Didn't bring my van stall, but somehow a van stall found its way into my hands today. Wow, that's a big nasty fish, man. Look at him on top. Wow. Dang, on a, dude. Uh, live, live bunker. On a live bunker, son. Nice. Real big fish out there. Like instant drop, too. Dude. Yeah, I mean, once we got that live bait out where it needed to be, the fish found it. You knew that there was fish around. The bait was just acting way too nervous for there not to be. Ooh. Coming down. Big fish, man. Real big fish. Would you believe it if I told you that reel is 15 years old? I 100% would believe it. I have one that I bought. I was 16 years old. I spent all of my lawn mowing money on it. <laughs> and that was in 2010. That's a lot of lawns, man. Yeah, my 2010, I bought that. Didn't tell my parents how much money it was gonna be. And uh, so that one's, you know, 13 years old. Oh, here she comes, y'all. Big nasty fish, that's a fat fish. Oh man, not done yet. Dude, this thing is stubborn. Come on, girl. Come see us. Come aboard this sailfish boat. Wow, look at that fish. Wow, look at that. That's a beauty. That is a beauty. That might be my biggest one, dude. Who knows? My biggest fish is 42 inches. Dude, that was sick. I mean, fish weren't easy to find, but when we did find them, the fish we found was an absolute giant. So, absolutely stoked to get this fish in the boat. Look at that thing, dude. Woo! A big, gnarly fish. Wow, look at that. He's covered in all these sea lice here, too, you know. Um, very, very interesting looking fish, but I've never seen it come up on film proper, but these fish are so purple. They have such a cool coloration and they're such an awesome fish. And he choked in that bunker. Look at the size of that mouth, man. That's sick. Wow. That's what you were talking about, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. What a beauty. John, do you prefer that they get revived, they get shot back in? Okay. Okay. There you go. Nice, dude. Thanks, man. That was awesome. All right, so we're back at the dock. I'm here with Cap McMurray. We have a perfect eating size 29 inch fish. We actually only kept this fish because we gut hooked it. Um, so it was, you know, it, it made sense to bring it home. It might not make it if we tried to release it. So Cap McMurray's gonna fillet this up. He's gonna show you guys his best way of filleting fish. And we're just gonna, you know, kind of hang out, have a good time at the dock. I would just add that we did yeah. gut hook it with a circle hook. Yeah, uh, so circle hooks work most of the time, but sometimes they mm -hmm. don't. So let's cut this thing. Right along the spine here. 
Nice. And you're actually using a serrated knife right yeah, now. Yeah, I like to use yeah. a serrated knife. You don't have to sharpen them all the time. And nice. It's cut pretty, pretty well. Nice. What do you think? You guys have had a lot of changes to striper fishing, mm -hmm. like, um, like in terms of regulations over the last couple of years. Do you think that's like helped, or what? Well, what do you think? I, I absolutely think it's helped. Yeah. In the fact that we've been able to have access to some really big fish. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean that I, fish we got my, today was a monster. Yeah, it was probably pretty close to 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this for 23 years, and I've never seen so many 40s and 50s as this year. Uh, as the last three years. Yeah, and uh, that's when the regulations 60s. changed. Yeah, and I think that's at least partially due to the fact that you know a lot of these fish are not ending up in somebody's cooler yeah and and those big ones not all of them but certainly some of them uh you could see visible scarring around their mm -hmm. jaw indicating that they have been caught before um so there's the benefit there uh you know i think it's probably helping the stock overall yeah uh is it going to get us to where we need to be by 2029 which is the rebuilding deadline mm -hmm. i don't know um, arguably that i mean that could be arbitrary right like it's like we're it just actually making it is up. arbitrary it's yeah. not biological it's yeah. based on an, an empirical it's uh -huh. an empirical reference point mm. at least my in my limited experience it's like when you get into the fish you realize how there's a good healthy population out there it seems yeah, like absolutely uh, so, it, you know, just anecdotally, from my point of view, yeah. uh, you know, it, the seasons, particularly the last three seasons, have been real good. Yeah. Uh, is the stock rebuilding? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, the, the, the current level of abundance, I think, is contributing to the overfishing situation. But Because everyone hears it's good, so everyone's yeah. going fishing. <laughs> but under normal sense. circumstances, if we didn't have this huge yeah. uh, target we had to meet, that'd be a good thing. You know? uh -huh. it's, uh, I think the trick is just finding that sweet spot where we have uh, reasonable access and, yeah. and still have uh, you know a healthy abundant stock at the same time there's certainly a lot of people out there that just want us to stop fishing for them yeah a hundred percent there's always going to be a lot of damage on every side. I, know, I know i know but then there's the moratorium crowd and, mm -hmm. there's, the and then there's the kill them all crowd, crowd right and yeah there's really not many people in the middle to be honest <laughs> with uh, so so reasonable voices are, are few and far between these days Anyway, that's it. There's two nice fillets there. I'm going to skin them for you. Beautiful. We throw these in for the crabs to eat. You know, we might as well pop that hook out of there. Yeah, we can get that guy back. So out of the fish that you catch here, what do you like to eat the most? Um, honestly, probably black sea bass. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, they got to be kind of big now to keep yeah. them, so it's it's hard. But you can still fit a 16-inch fish on a on a plate and eat it whole. Yeah. I like to eat them off the bone. Okay. Most of the best. I mean, every time I've eaten a fish whole, it's almost been oh, the best fish that I've yeah. ever had. It's like eating a piece of chicken. You know, it tastes better on the bone. Uh huh. There's a lot more going on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kevin Murray does this stuff. But he also does a ton of offshore tuna fishing. Yeah, so it's like your favorite thing, right? Would yeah. you say? Mm -hmm. So if you guys look on this wall behind me, you could see the tuna graveyard <laughs> hanging out here. There's just a handful of tails that have uh, made their way up on the yeah, wall. At least 100 pounds to get on that. 100 pounds to get on the wall. So I think we definitely are going to have to come back here. But if you guys want to learn anything about Cap McMurray, his operation, and everything like that, we have links down in the description. If you want to come fishing with him, we have all those links down in the description. So you guys can check them out there. John, Thanks, give you brother. a fish handshake. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah appreciate you, man. It was Peace. a good time. And I think I will be seeing you guys back in Florida. So we're going to have to pack this stuff up in a cooler and uh, ship it on the plane. We'll see how it goes. So Christina left these at the house thinking I wouldn't drink them. Joke's on her, I'll take anything. When I'm cooking, I just really like, you know, some type of adult beverage, really not that picky. So cheers to you guys for sticking around this long into the video. Crazy, honestly crazy to me that I get to do stuff like this. And uh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. And um, I think because this is actually gonna be a solo cooking sesh, uh, we'll talk on it a little bit later. So this was my first time bringing back fish on a flight. Flew from New York to Orlando this morning. And let me show you how I ship the striper. 
I literally went to a Walmart, I picked up like a soft side cooler, bought a bunch of these ice packs, and um, froze them in my hotel fridge overnight, packed the fish in there, and I mean, I think it was in there for like six hours and it was still super cold when I got, got back home. Worked out pretty easily. I just literally shoved it in my checked bag and you know, it probably looked hilarious if they inspected my luggage, finding literal, you know, meat inside it, you know, packed inside like this tap, this bag with tackle and clothes and just random junk. But got here, the fish looks great. You know, definitely didn't spoil or anything like that. We're gonna cut it up and we're gonna do a super, super easy recipe tonight. I'm completely solo. So I am not going to the store, not getting any crazy ingredients. I'm just gonna do a very simple recipe and you guys are my dinner date, I guess. But I'm chopping some of our striper in a kind of taco sized portions. Um, nothing too huge. I have found a little bit of veggies in the fridge. So I found some tomatoes, found some onions, and I think we're gonna make some tacos. Honestly, the striper looks exactly like snook to me. Um, minus a couple things. I think there's a little bit fatter of a bloodline, but you know, it's funny, Rich was talking with me and Rich, you know, being from the Northeast, he's eaten a lot of stripers over the years. And myself, growing up in Florida, I've eaten a lot of snook over the years. And he's convinced that snook is better than striper. I'm convinced that striper is better than snook. Um, but we'll see. I think they're both pretty darn good. I honestly think I like catching them both more than I like eating them though. I think, I just think those fish are special. Um, and every once in a while, it's nice to bring one home to eat, but I think the most enjoyment that I get is actually you know, getting a bite, setting the hook, and getting to hold them and see the fish live for a second. We're gonna keep it super simple with the seasoning. I just found this blackened seasoning in my cabinet. Not mine, definitely one of my roommates, but uh, let's just keep it a secret between you and me that we're using it. I, I don't think my roommates watch the video, so they won't figure it out. I'm gonna season both sides of these guys. Don't mind all the seasoning that's getting on the counter. I think I make the biggest mess anytime I cook. It absolutely drives Christina crazy. And I clean up after I cook and she cleans as she goes. And it's another reason why I just give her headaches. But for some reason she sticks around. So I guess she actually likes me. I don't know what's happening outside, but it's been chill all day. And it literally sounds like there's a tornado right now. Oh my God. <laughs> What is going on with you? This is, this is kind of ridiculous. I don't know what's happening. We might have some Florida thunderstorms about to happen. Finish seasoning these guys up. It is honestly so weird to me that I get to do this job, that I get to travel and fish and meet new people and experience new things. And I mean, 2023, this, you know, this era of life is a very, very weird time where guys like me get to pursue our passions and chase things that we, you know, almost, I mean, at least for me, I barely dreamed of being able to do stuff like this. I always figured I would work a, you know, normal job, have a very normal life, white picket fence. Um, but here we are. Just coming back from New York, I've been to Panama, the country twice in the past month, um, Mexico, have another Mexico trip coming up. Um, it's just absolutely wild. So thank you to you guys for enjoying these videos and you know helping me be able to chase this dream and do these things because it's just absolutely insane to me. And you know, I don't absolutely hate my videos, but I'll tell you what, sometimes I like sit there and I'm editing a video and I'm like, dang man, this sucks. I hate this so much. And then I just keep working through it and eventually I can tolerate the video and I post it and you guys seem to like it. So <laughs> it is what it is. I'm going to keep going. I, I just always have thoughts of, man, I could have done this better. And man, that could have been better. Um, I could have shot this differently. I could have said this in a more succinct way. I could have been less grumpy on camera. Um, but here we are just trying to get better with every video. Got the pan on like medium heat. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of oil and actually found a little yellow onion in the fridge. So we're gonna saute some of that guy up first before I cook our fish. It is 
still freaking blowing out there. I don't know what's happening. So some of you guys that are new here might not know this. I started this channel in the six months prior to me leaving Florida to join the United States Marine Corps. Spent four years as an officer in the Marine Corps on active duty before um, finishing up my contract and then switching to YouTube full time, which I'm coming up on doing that two years uh, this summer. Wow, July, that's time flies. I'll tell you guys what, man, there, there was just this really weird feeling that I had when I was in the Marine Corps, when I was on active duty. I loved it. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Um, but I always felt, I always felt guilty when I got done with work, when I got done with PT, um, in my downtime, if I wasn't working on something YouTube related. And it was just a hobby then, right? Like, you know, I made a couple dollars here and there, but I always felt like I needed to be working on building the YouTube channel and building something and growing an audience and getting better at making videos. and. I don't really know why. Like, I just felt like I needed to be doing it. It was like I was in college again, where I always felt guilty if I wasn't studying for an exam or working on a project because there was always something to do. I don't know if I've ever told that story um, to you guys before. So now I'm gonna go in the pan with some of our striper. Same pan, no need to make extra dishes. And this should cook pretty darn fast, uh, since I cut it into smaller pieces. While that fish is going, I'm gonna just heat up a couple flour tortillas real quick. Give you guys a weather update. It's coming down now, the wind's kinda chilled out. But uh, yeah, definitely not a day that I would have wanted to be out fishing at for the sunset bite. Come in and flip these guys one by one. Oh, the power's flickering. Not good, we might be eaten by candlelight in a second, guys. All right, that was pretty darn easy. I actually, I enjoy um, getting out of my comfort zone and trying new recipes and you know doing things that i wouldn't normally do for youtube video or in real life and doing that for a youtube video on catching cooks but sometimes i just enjoy the simplicity of enjoying a fish not going above and beyond not going crazy with the recipe and you know just having a simple meal um i'm going in with just a little bit of sour cream on these tortillas um, which are super hot this is actually kind of hurting my hand and let's go in with some pieces of our striped bass which is flaking apart really, really nicely. It looks good. Then we'll go in with some of our onions and some cherry tomatoes. Bam. Mm. You guys hear that thunder? I'm ready to eat. There we have a quick, easy dinner. I'll have you guys for the first bite. I'll go in with a little bit of lemon juice. Just a couple drops. Oh, this is gonna be good. Hmm. So that was absolutely delicious. Um, I didn't want you guys to have to watch me just like consume all of those tacos and I'm probably gonna go back from seconds here. <laughs> Um, and then I'm gonna be absolutely useless, but I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about how I made the decision when I want, decided that I wasn't gonna continue my career as an officer in the Marine Corps, because I really could have stayed in um, 20 years, you know, had a wonderful pension, got to, you know, travel more, see more things, train with some of the hardest dudes in the world. Um, but I just, I felt like, I needed to do this. I felt like I needed to pursue YouTube. I just, I felt this weird thing inside me. 
Um, and I felt like if I didn't go out and chase it when I had the opportunity, you know, being, I think I was 27 when I, when I got out, when I got done with active duty, um, was a single guy then and um, didn't really have, you know, crazy obligations. Um, I felt like that was the time and I felt like it was now or never and I didn't think I would forgive myself if I didn't take the leap, take the jump. Um, and man, that first year was a little sketchy, guys. Uh, Money-wise, I had put like some money away and, um, but during my time on active duty to give myself a little buffer to do this thing full time. And that first year, you know, YouTube doesn't pay all that much unless you're getting really good views. And now I've had other opportunities come in in the last year, um, but shoot, it was a little sketchy uh, last year. Now we're in a really good place. And if I could offer any words of wisdom to you guys, um, and with my very limited life experience, right? I would say that if you feel like you If you feel like you are meant to do something or you need to do something, you have to go out and chase it. And, uh, I don't know, come in a little bit closer. Let's, let's get a little bit real here for a second. Um, you have to. You, you can't just put it on the back burner and say, I'll get to it later because life is so messy. Life is so busy and so many things come up and you're always going to give yourself an excuse on why you can't do the thing that you want to do, why you can't pursue it. And man, like this whole thing could fall apart tomorrow. And you know, this advice could be complete BS, but if it keeps going the way things are going um, with me pursuing YouTube, social media, content creation, partnering with cool brands, um, I feel like the opportunities are endless and I'm gonna get to do a lot more cool stuff um, in the rest of my life. And I really want you guys that might be in, you might be in the shoes I was in, you know, four years ago, two years ago, where you're decently happy. You're, you're semi-content, but you just feel something like you need to do something else. You need to itch, a, you know, you, you need to fulfill a need. There's something in you that needs to be done. There's, you know, maybe it's something artistic, maybe it's something physical, but you, you feel like you have to do it and you guys got to go chase it. Um, Overanalyzing it, sitting there thinking about it, planning for years uh, is not going to make it happen. You have to do the thing. You have to make the mistakes. You have to take the risks and you can't worry about the people um, that you know that might quote unquote judge you for it. You know, your parents, your significant other, your coworkers um, for taking those risks because they have all their own insecurities too. And it's been awesome. You guys have been super supportive. People that I know, after they, you know, they saw that I eventually became successful, became much more supportive. And uh, man, I hope this ball keeps rolling. I'm gonna keep giving it my all. I'm gonna keep trying to make the best possible videos for you guys. Ugh. Getting a little, little runny nose here. Um, I'm gonna do my best to make, keep making the best possible videos for you guys. And they may not be always be the most epic fishing locations or the most epic, um, you know, situations, but I want to tell the best story. I want to bring you guys along and make you feel like you were there and um, get better at this whole thing, man, because honestly, I, I feel like I'm just getting started and I said it earlier, but I always feel like my videos suck and um, it's, you know, it's, it's reassuring when they do get good views and you guys do tell me that you like them, but I just know that I hate most of the stuff that I do make. Um, I think I've gotten super long-winded here. This has been, you know, a lot longer, a lot rantier than I intended, but maybe you guys can take a little bit of wisdom out of it if you've stuck around this long into this video. If you guys want to see something, I wouldn't say similar to this, but something that I'm really proud of, a video that I was really proud to make, go ahead and check out this one. Um, there. Wow, we're in really close. Check out this one right there and um, I'll see you guys over there.